We finally made it to chapter 3, and in chapter 3, Solomon turns to exploring times and seasons and change and concluding that God is in control of all of that and that he sets eternity in our hearts. So let's look at Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 15, as we look at Solomon and time and change and all that kind of stuff. There's an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven, a time for everything. A time to give birth, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing, a time to search and a time to count as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from all his struggles? I have seen the task that God has given the children of Adam to keep them occupied. He has made everything appropriate in its time. He has put eternity in their hearts. But no one can discover the work God has done from beginning to end. I know there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and enjoy the good life. It is also the gift of God whenever anyone eats, drinks, and enjoys all his efforts. I know that everything God does will last forever. There is no adding to it or taking from it. God works so that people will be in awe of him. Whatever is has already been and whatever will be already is. However, God seeks justice for the persecuted. So, I wish I had it with me, but I, I have a couple of hourglasses that are coming for youth group for this week. We use hourglasses. They're kind of a dated technology now, but we use stuff like that as timers for games and stuff like that. It doesn't do a lot of good in the modern life in our, in our houses and things like that necessarily, um, but we use timers for games. We use shot clocks for sports. We can't waste it, and when it's gone, it's gone. Time that's wasted is gone and we can never get it back. We only have so much time and God wants us to make the most of it while we have it. So what is Solomon talking about here? First, he's talking about the fact that there is a time for everything, an appointed time for everything to happen, a proper time, place, season for everything, a time that God chooses. Nothing comes unless God allows it. In this part of the of Ecclesiastes 3, there are 28 different Um, seasons of life, each in a couplet of contrast. He's describing the full scale of the activities of life. He's describing the full scale of life on earth, of the human experience. We all go through birth, we go through life, we go through work, we go through love, we go through death. Nothing really changes for humanity over time. It all cancels each other out for a sum total of zero. All these things, there's a time for this, a time for that, cancels each other out and it equals zero. It's all normal. Seasons of life, Seasons of life according to the purpose and plan of God. He's in it. There is order to life because he's in it. To both things we see as positive and things we see as negative. God appoints the times and seasons and they all have a place. Think about it from this perspective. If I had a shopping cart, it's totally cool for me to put a 17-year-old baby in the shopping cart and push him through the store. But it's not for a 17-year-old son or my 18-year-old son. I have an 18-year-old. God appoints the time and season. There's a time and place for everything to happen. Second thing, one thing that we can count on is change. Things are going to change. One thing that's guaranteed is that life is going to change. The evidence is all around us in in the seasons, in our technology, in our bodies. All of it changes whether we like it or not. And we need to embrace it and we need to let God be in control of it and use it to shape us and mold us and open our eyes to him and to his presence. Change turned Mary from a peasant teenage girl into the mother of the Messiah. It turned David into a simple, from a simple shepherd boy into the greatest king of Israel. And when we become believers, when we become followers of Christ, we go from blindness to sight. We go from death to life when we follow Christ. Change stretches us. It causes us to grow. It molds us. It shapes us into who we're meant to be. We need to embrace change. Third thing that he talks about here is that God is in control. Instead of worry and fear, let all these things push us to a place of hope because we know that God is in control. He's steady. He's in control through whatever we have. Though everything else seems like it's changing, everything else seems like it's crumbling all around us, he's in control. He's sovereign. That's the churchy term for this. He determines our days. He's holding it all together. Sometimes things seem like they repeat over and over again. Sometimes he does that so that he can get our attention, so that he can move us and teach us things about him or about ourselves. He's got it in control. He's got it in his time. He'll go the distance with us and for us. All of life unfolds under the hand of God. And every time and every season, God is there. Fourth thing, our perspective and God's are different. All of our lives are like puzzles. 
God brings each piece together to try to shape us. He makes it all work. He makes it all beautiful and draws us to himself in his time. We can't see the big picture from beginning to end, but we will someday. We're bound by time and space, but God is not. We have 86,400 seconds in a day. Once they're gone, they're gone. God is not bound by that. It can be frustrating for us that God's timing is not ours, but we can trust his timing. We can wait for him and let him reveal the whole perspective. We can trust that his timing is always for the best. Time haunts us like watching the sand go through the hourglass as it's running out of time. We say things like, where did the time go? I just don't have enough time. There aren't enough hours in a day. When, when will my time come? I just got to make the most of my time. God is not bound by time like we are. Fifth thing, we know that there's more than just here and now. Verse 11 makes this very clear. He's saying it all has meaning. It all has purpose. It isn't random. It isn't completely godless. It's fully and precisely God-ordained and God-aligned. Romans 8, 28 says he works all things together for the good of those who, call, who are his and called according to his purpose. There's something more. We know that there's something more. We know that there's someone more. We know that there's somewhere more. This is why little girls want to be princesses of a kingdom. Why little boys want to conquer kingdoms. Those things help illustrate that. All of our joys on earth, they're just a taste of heaven because there's something more. God puts a curiosity inside every one of us to yearn for, for eternity from childhood on. Deep in our hearts, we yearn for that. We yearn for eternity. We yearn for infinity. We yearn for life outside of time and space. See, as Lewis says, if I, if I find in myself something that can't be, this is a summary of it, um, something in this world that can't satisfy, it's probably because I was made for another world. That's a weak summary of that, but that's the quote. We're made for something more. We're made for another world. Enjoy the good gifts of God. That's the sixth thing here. God gives us things. God allows us to enjoy life. He gives us the ability to have joy and to do good, and he gives us good gifts, food, drink, all that kind of stuff, work. He enjoy the details. They're part of the beautiful, bigger picture. Drink deeply of life as it's a gift from God. Those special moments, they won't last forever. They can't last forever. Think about a vacation or a moment in time. It doesn't last forever. Make the most of those times. Make the best of that event and that season because it's going to change. It's okay to enjoy your life. You should enjoy your life. As believers, we're not meant to, to not have joy. We're meant to enjoy life. It's okay to enjoy our car and our family and our home and our hobbies and our extracurricular activities and our health and our church and our friends friendships and all that stuff. We should enjoy the good gifts that God gives us. And finally, we need to allow our frustration to drive us to trust in Christ. The real reality that all of this is vanity, that it's meaningless and purposeless, should drive us to take refuge in God. The meaninglessness of life summons us to fear God. Frustration at things not being the way that we want them to be or how they should be should drive us to trust Christ. We can't know the entire plan. We can't fully grasp it, no matter how hard we try. That limitation should push us to faith in God, to deeper faith in God, to deeper trust in God. The cycle of time, the cycle of life, that was true even for Jesus. He had a time to be born. He had a time to live, to teach, to party with his friends, to enjoy family, to do all those things, a time to die and a time to be resurrected. And there's a time that he's coming back. He knows what it's like. Hebrews 1 says he came to earth and experienced life as we experience it. All of our tension, all of our frustration, all of the burdens, those are meant to drive us to God. Time is ticking. Change happens. Time's going on all around us. Change is going on all around us. There's a point in time for everything to happen, and the world is full of change. We have to learn to trust that God is in control and that he knows what he's doing a lot better than we do. Set aside a place in your heart to trust God, to trust him to provide all your answers, to provide all your needs because he loves you so much. He has all the answers. He still has all the answers. Even when it feels like the world's crumbling around us, he's still in control. Enjoy what he's given you. Allow him to move in and through you. Allow him to use those things. Know that he still loves you. Whatever season you're going through, whatever season you're in, he still loves you and he still saves, regardless of how awful things may seem in the world around us or in your world right where you are. Trust him. He loves you. He wants to restore you. He wants to redeem you. There's a time for everything.